Ooh. Oh, there we go. There's a pipe. He's rubbing me all over this log. I'm trying to trying to get over there. Welcome everybody to Backroads Angling. We're back out at the pike hole. I got my fly rod down here and I got a spinning rod with a whopper plopper on it. We're back here trying to get some big pike this time. I don't know how big they get in this section of river. We're looking for a 30 inch plus pike. We're looking for a 20 inch smallie. That'd be a big one. So we're aiming big today. There we go. Oh, pike. Did you see him come out of the water for that? Why doesn't he chase it? Not gonna be as easy today. Ooh, got hit right next to me. Smalley, dang, that was a good take. That was probably that guy that bumped me at first. Boat side strike, hopefully I got that on film. This is pretty money right here. I think I'm gonna have to go anchor down on this spot. I'm gonna try and get it so I can cast on either side of this root in front of me. Okay, we're anchored. There's a paw. Right where he should have been, huh? Wow, that got the adrenaline pumping. It's a pretty good sized one. Hard to get him to come back. Hmm, man. Went straight vertical, didn't he? Whew, man, my adrenaline's pumping. Wow. It's that first initial side of it. They want it, and then they're showing some restraint, I guess, afterwards. All right, I'm on, folks. Nice smallie. He's rubbing me all over this log. I'm trying to trying to get over there. I'm trying to get direct contact. Oh, it's a nice smallie. There's a nice smallie. That's a really nice smallie. I think I got him. That is a toad, Smalley. Come on, come over. Yeah. Whew, that's a big, big Smalley. I don't have my scale, but gee, Merry Christmas. The sun just came out and maybe that'll change our fortunes. <clears throat> I'm gonna try and get this one over to the shore. We gotta get by this. We gotta get by this. We're going kayak. Kayak on this. That was the exact same spot. I thought I just caught a nice large mouth about 15 or 20 minutes ago. Get this fish a drink real quick. I don't know if that's a 20 inch or not. Can't be too far off. Oop, let's be careful. There we go, everybody. Just a tank of a smallmouth. Just an absolute unit. Look at that fish. My goodness, it's been a really slow day. Caught a nice large mouth out of that exact same spot. And now we got this, almost the exact same place I caught the large mouth on the crankbait earlier. But that is a fish, man. Okay, let's let him go. gone so i had those two pike takes early on that i missed they came all the way out of the water caught a nice large mouth out of these sticks in here with the crankbait i right after that i lost that crankbait in those same sticks um, and then i was just coming back to go upstream and try some old water that i fished last week yeah cast it in there behind these riffles i mean it's a good looking spot so many sticks it's no surprise he's in there but he absolutely smoked it i didn't catch the hookup on camera but that's on me stay tuned let's see if we can get on some more I think this is the spot where that pike swerved me. Oh, there we got him. 
It's that same pike we saw before. Yeah, I need to get up there. Oh no. This is gonna be a train wreck. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so I'm hung up here. I'm hung up all sorts of ways. All sorts of ways. I got him, but my freaking fly rod is caught up. Gosh dang it. Okay. Flipping fly rod. Alright, I'm going around here. Yeah, I still have him. Amazingly, I still do have him. He's not a bad pike. I don't think. This fly rod is causing me all kinds of problems. Okay. That is the pike we saw before. I'd kind of like to keep him. Okay. That was the pike that came all the way out of the water before. Oh, my heart is racing. What a train wreck. Everything got all botched up. Let's get this guy separated from the plopper. Things are super hard to get unhooked, even when it's on the outside of the mouth. Okay. Nice fight from that little guy. There we go. <laughs> Knew that was gonna happen. I just cast it in there like two or three times again and hadn't got a bite. So he just wanted it at just the right angle and then he ambushed it. Did not miss it that time. The old fly rod got me in trouble there. I was, that was a problem. Fly rod has not really paid off today. And my goodness, the fly rod really got me in trouble. Oh, there's one. Yep. That looks like a gator. He's not even big enough to eat. I was gonna say I could eat him, but he's not even big enough for that. We're putting him in the net though, so he doesn't hurt us. <gasps> I dropped my jaw spreaders. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. How deep is it here? Dang, it's pretty deep. Oh shoot, it's deep. Tack on it. Even with the jaw spreaders, this guy had it way down in his gills. He was in he's in pretty bad shape, so there he is. I'm gonna keep him. He's really small. Still he'll have a decent amount of meat on him. But I'm certainly not gonna let him go to waste, so I don't think he would make it, so he's going in the fish basket. And maybe Maybe we'll make this into a pike catching cook, I don't know. Whoa, there we go, there's a pike. Wow. I think he's, I'm gonna put him with my other one, I think, if I can land him. Yep. Nice. He's got the hooks on the outside too, that'll make it easier on me. Uh, now we're getting a little bit too much going on here if we didn't already have too much going on. Nice. All right, I'm gonna keep him too. Two pike. And then maybe we'll do a catch and cook. That was pretty cool. Here we go, folks. A couple little pike for dinner. All right, one final hurrah. This is the place where I got the walleye on the way down. And uh, it's the place where I caught big smallie last time, nice pike last time, lots of possibilities. There, I got something. Maybe a walleye? Probably a smallmouth. It's fighting pretty decent. Oh, another walleye. 
Sweet. If he's a little bigger, I'd put him on the pile. He's not quite big enough, though. There we go. Some Walters down there hitting me. So we've caught about three smallmouth today. One real good one. Two walleye. I believe we've caught three or four pike, three pike. There's another fish. Be a bigger walleye and we'll keep you. I think we're keeping this guy. I think we're gonna keep that guy. He's a little bit bigger Walter. They're sitting right along the shelf here. I think we're gonna keep that guy. He's about 14 inches, maybe. All right, so I just went to a white pulser, kind of my go-to. And uh, what is that? A couple of walleyes real quick. There's a sand drop off and it drops off real quick. These fish are sitting right along it. There we go, let's try that one. Usually a pretty good color for walleye. This is a bigger one, more like a three and a quarter inch. Other one was 2.5, I think. So this is a little bit bigger chunk of cheese. See what they think of it first cast. Got one. It feels pretty good. This might be an even bigger one. This might be a really nice walleye. I think it is a walleye. Yep. That's a pretty good one right there. Oh yeah. Oh, that's, a nice one. that's a nice one. I might swap him out for my other one. That's a nice like, whoa. That's a nice like 16, 17 incher. Yep, that's almost 17 inches. Here we go, folks. Nice walleye. Last time I came here, I didn't realize how stacked this was with walleyes. That was an orange pulsar first cast. It's usually a pretty good, pretty good walleye killer. All right, so of course the first thing I did was clean these fish. So the pike, aside from filleting it, you also have to remove these things called Y bones. There's other videos online that are much better explaining this, so I'm not going to explain it too much. But you end up with these little strips uh, if you do it right, and there should not be any bones. Once I had the pike and walleye all filleted up. Then it's time to head to the kitchen. This recipe is kind of a mixture of different recipes that I've used over the years. I've kind of taken things from ones that I like and cut out things from ones that I don't like. The first thing I do is I put, uh, you know, about a cup of milk and a couple eggs. Mix it up real well. That's gonna allow the batter to stick to the fish. So you can see that the pike is in more strips. We had to do that to get the Y bones out and then you have walleye fillets. You can vary how much of the fish you actually taste by how big you cut these chunks. If you cut a big chunk, you're gonna taste more meat. If you cut a small chunk, you're gonna taste more batter. So, so for the batter, I like to use cereal for the crunchiness. I think my favorite is probably corn flakes, but I didn't have any of those, so I'm using corn checks. In this case, I mixed it one to one with flour. So one part flour, one part crunch cereal. Again, you can vary this. If you want more crunchiness, put more cereal. If you want less crunchiness, put more flour. I like to add a little bit of sugar, so here I'm adding about a tablespoon. You can go a little bit less, half a tablespoon. Just a little bit of sugar though, gives it a hint of sweet taste and I really like that. I also added a little bit of salt and pepper. Then I like to add Italian seasoning. I think in this case I'm going to add about probably a tablespoon, so quite a bit of that. Then just add whatever spices you like. I added some garlic powder in here as well. So now it's time to coat the fillets with batter. Just drop them in the cereal flour mixture and then into the grease. Importantly, the grease needs to be the right temperature. It needs to sizzle a little bit when you put it in, but if there's grease popping out of the skillet and flying everywhere, I find that's too hot. In this case, I think I actually had it a little bit too hot, but getting the grease the right temperature before you put the fish in is key. So I prepared the walleye, I believe, and then later I prepared the pike. I wanted to keep them separate and put them side by side to so actually do a taste test. Here you can see the pike on the left, walleye on the right. And so I sampled them at the end and actually, especially when it's fried, you really can't tell a huge difference between the pike and walleye, to be honest. The pike to me seemed a little, had a little bit more water and was a little bit more juicy, whereas the walleye seemed to be a little bit firmer and drier, but otherwise the taste wasn't dramatically different for me. 
We'll have to try baking it next time where you really get the taste of the fish without any batter kind of interfering. And we'll have to see if we can taste the difference between the walleye and the pike. All right, everybody, that was my pike and walleye catch and cook. Hope you enjoyed it. We're gonna do another one soon. I think the next one I'm gonna do is probably gonna be a white bass and wiper catch and cook. So stay tuned for that. Might also do some catfish catching cooks as well down the stretch here. All in all, that was a fun outing. I think the highlight was that big smallmouth and some vertical jumping pike and, and a good walleye hole that I hope to hit again sometime. I've got another trip here planned in the near future, in a few days, to a different river where we're gonna be targeting walleye and pike and maybe some smallmouth as well again. So if you like this type of footage, there's gonna be more coming pretty soon, okay? Thanks a lot, everybody. I really appreciate it. See you later, bye.